Hey y'all, it's Brandon with Voodoo Forge. I want to talk to y'all about ball peen hammers today. Everybody's seen them. Everybody knows, you know, what they are. Um, but I just want to talk a little bit about the differences in them and 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 what they get used for in the blacksmith shop. Now, I actually, boy, I thought I had a pretty good idea what uh, ball peen hem hammers were for, and, and then I did a little bit of research, and uh, yeah, no, uh, turns out they have a, a, a their intended purpose was uh, peening uh, metals, um, and uh, it, it, it's a way to impact, harden the surface of a material. Uh, it, it seems to be kind of a Maybe, maybe it has the same effect. It's nowhere near the same thing, but like has the same effect as color case hardening, where it hardens the surface, but below the surface, it's still a uh, softer material. Uh, and there are other, other ways to peen other than just impact uh, peening. There's, well, uh, there's, there's shot peening, where shot is shot at, uh, at a surface to, to harden the outside. There's uh, laser peening, light peening. There are different types of peening. Anyway, I, I didn't know that, but anyway, that's, these hammers hardly get used for that anymore. I don't know of anybody who does anything remotely like that anymore. So, uh, I know I don't. If anybody, if anybody out there is peen and steel uh, with a ball peen hammer, let me know. Uh, now, what these do get used for is, is a regular forging hammer, just using the, the face of the hammer. I really like the weight on most ball peen hammers, the way they're weighted feels good in my hand. Uh, we also, the balls get used for the, the peens. Uh, there's all kinds of different shapes of these. And so they get used a lot in dishing material. They get used a lot in, in sinking material. I'll explain what this stuff means later. Uh, texturing, you know, putting a, a kind of stippled, uh, peened texture on there. Maybe that, maybe that is a way of, uh, of peening. The metal. Maybe that, who knew that that texture might be making the surface harder. Um, but mostly the, the, the ball pins get used to, for uh, uh, decorative features in steel, putting, putting something. Um, so anyway, let me show you some of the hammers and, and go over some of the, what I just babbled about. Okay, this is a pretty good cross section of uh, ball pin hammers. Um, and I, I mean this this one's a little over three pounds this one's three pounds two pounds and and they go down from there this is the smallest one i have this is a four ounce uh ball peen but i have seen a two ounce um this one does not get used in smith work this is uh this actually i just did when well, i'm working on like something delicate like firearms or something i use this but um a lot of these are the same weight, but the reason why I have so many is the the balls are different and have different. Um, I use them for different things. So let, let's let's uh, let's go over hammer parts real quick, and then I'll I'll start showing you specifics. Okay, now these are going to be the different parts of the hammer. Uh, we've got the cheek, which is the either side and the side against the table of the uh, hammer. The eye is where the handle goes in. Uh, the uh, peen, this is a ball peen, here's the peen back here. Then we've got the neck right here. This is the uh, pole or the bell and then the face of the hammer. Now this guy right here has a different type of eye on it. You can see how it comes down. That's called an ADS eye, A-D-Z. Uh, if you're not familiar with an ADS, it's a, uh, a woodworking tool usually uh, with a long handle, there are hand adds that are one-handed tools, but usually it's a two-handed tool and it's used in hewing uh, logs or cutting channels in logs. But anyway, this is it's called an adds eye. You see it mostly on uh, claw hammers. You don't see it on uh, ball peens a whole lot. Uh, this being your, your, you know, this is the classic ball peen look. Okay, these four hammers, I'm showing you some of the differences in some of the balls. Uh, you can see that where that one is is a bit pointier than that one and these two are more blunt 
but they're all a little different and you know if, if they're tools that you own you start to learn what you like each hammer to do uh, with my larger ball pins that I use quite a bit just as regular forging hammers um, this one right here in particular I like this I mean that, that's almost a, a regular face but that's a good round uh, a hammer. I, I use this a lot when I'm, I need to move material from the middle of something out because it'll open it up all the way around. Dishing is something that's done where you take a, uh, a I usually use cold material when I'm doing this and I use thin sheet metal but when you're making something like a ladle cup or uh, something along those lines uh, and you, you have a divot in something and you take, or I take the ball peen and, and work it in that to produce a cup. Uh, and that's, that's dishing. So that's, uh, that's one thing you do with the ball peen. Also, you can um, sink things. And uh, people's terminology may be a little different on this, but when you sink something, or what I call sinking something, is when you take a piece of hot material and put it onto the end grain wood and, and sink it in there to give it a dished shape. Uh, you do this when you're forging leaves or, or spoons or something like that where you need to take it hot and sink it. It would be impossible to do those operations without a ball peen hammer. Okay, texturing. This texture um, on this door pull right here was applied with a ball peen hammer and it's um, you take the ball peen hammer and you hit the material over and over again putting a little dimple in it each time and that gives it a texture uh, that a lot of people like some people don't but a lot of people like that i get specific requests people ask me for that hammered texture and this is what they're always talking about so uh, i i do this with a a, a ball peen hammer this is an example of some of the texturing that you might do on the head of a rivet or a nail or something like that that you've set. Something else that a ball pin gets used for a lot in my shop is I've got this hammer right here is a softened hammer. Uh, you don't ever want to strike two hardened steel hammers to each other but this hammer's soft and uh, soft you can see it's starting to roll up on the edge I need to clean that up but I use this hammer so that I can use other hammers as struck tools and I've quite a bit used a, um, a ball peen as a set hammer let's put it somewhere specific where I need a, a divot and drive it in with my, my softened hammer once again make sure you never strike two hardened hammers against each other but if you have a hammer that's been a knee a hammerhead that's been annealed and softened it's okay then uh, or even if you just make a mild steel hammerhead specifically to do this I don't particularly care for the I have some non marring brass hammers and things like that but they don't they don't pack the oomph of a steel head so I like the the softened one now also picking up ball peen hammer heads they're available out there I never pay more than a dollar to a piece for them but it can be a time saving thing uh, when you're making another tool when you need another tool these are uh, a, a couple of uh, hot cuts that I've, I've reforged um, ball peen hammer heads to make you do need to make sure when you, you get one that you're going to report, make sure that it's not cast. Uh, one of the dead giveaways for it being cast will be a casting line on the uh, hammer itself. But um, you can also use them. I've got a video on how you can make a little hatchet out of uh, ball peen hammer heads. So any you see, uh, if I see them and they're a dollar to a piece, I always pick them up and throw them in a drawer if I need them for something or material or you never know so something else to think about well y'all I hope you got something out of that hopefully you now realize that ball paint hammers are for more than just monsters to uh, break kneecaps with but that's that's some of the hammers I use in the shop that's some of the things I use them for uh, you know things that you can use these for there's there's no end to your uh, your whatever you can think of is what you can use these hammers for 
So anyway, like I said, I hope that helped you out. Uh, if you like the video, please hit the like button. If you'd like to see more videos like this, please subscribe to the channel. And if you have any questions, comments, please leave them below. All right, y'all behave yourselves.